<laughs> Test. Hi everyone. Hello. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. I think uh, I was gonna introduce that about myself in the second slide, but you did that for me. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, uh, funny story. When I submitted the topic for tonight, it was you don't need jQuery anymore. But while putting together the presentation, I found that I needed to change the title. So tonight, may I present to you, Do You Need jQuery in 2019? So, a little bit about myself, just to reiterate what Rachel has, um, has uh, said. So I went to film school and I did uh, video production, filmmaking, and I specialized in audio post-production. And right now, I'm working in a broadcast center where I make videos look good and sound good. So you see the picture, it's, um, it's of me in the video room during lunch break and I was watching a video on JavaScript. Hobby, hobby. <laughs> so last year, I stumbled upon Free Code Camp and I found that I really enjoyed learning about web development. So I bought some courses on Udemy and right now, I'm enrolled in a full stack co uh, coding bootcamp at Trent Global College. And you see the 1990 uh, Battle Tank, that's one of my favorite TV games. So, uh, show of hands, please let me know um, who of you has used jQuery in the past? Wow, okay, okay. Who's using jQuery now? Lesser. Oh, okay. Very interesting. So I suspect that jQuery has a soft spot in many people's hearts because I read that many developers talk about it fondly even if they do not use it anymore. And I read that one of them said, I owe my career to jQuery because he started to learn it and to use it first, then he learned JavaScript along the way. So what's jQuery? So once upon a time, back in the 1990s and the early 2000s, browsers had a lot of compatibility issues. There were a lot of cross-browser quirks and standardization issues. So Netscape and Internet Explorer were fighting a war. Microsoft was pushing for their standards. CSS was, at that time, a mess. And DOM manipulation was very limited. The browser world was ruled by Internet Explorer and Google Chrome wasn't even in the picture yet. So jQuery was born in this, in this time. It was released in August 2006 by John Resig and what he wanted to do was to separate JavaScript from the HTML tags so that the code looks clean and is, and is easier to understand. He wrote this on the first jQuery website. It's a long quote, but let me point out the second sentence to you. Writing JavaScript code should be fun. And indeed, with jQuery, writing JavaScript code is not just fun, but is easy to understand and apply. jQuery was such a push for the web because it lowered the bar for almost anyone to build something with it. So for the benefit of those not in web development, uh, this is a snippet of a jQuery code. So you have a button with an ID of test, and when you click on it, a pop-up window will show with the message, button is clicked. Some users of jQuery, and the top three would be for DOM manipulation, CSS selectors, and AJAX requests. So one of the most compelling reasons for using jQuery was to fix the broken DOM API. And that's because cross-browser compatibility issue had been a giant pain for a long time because different browsers, they had access to different features and they implemented things differently. But jQuery totally removed this barrier. So for DOM manipulation, when you select something with jQuery, it will return to you not the actual element, but uh, a jQuery object 
and with it comes more than 300 methods like uh, fade in, fade out, dot color, dot CSS, etc. However, when document.query selector and document.query selector all were introduced, it came with pretty much the same set of selector options. So any CSS selector that you would previously use in jQuery, you could now use in JavaScript. So today, we don't have a lot of browser compatibility issues because browsers and the web API have increasingly, increasingly advanced in performance these few years and one can do a lot without jQuery. Of course, there are gaps in pre-internet Explorer 10 and old Safari or WebKit implementations, but these can be filled in with small directed libraries. And if we need to give cross-browser file upload support and other kinds of support, you could pull in libraries other than jQuery. And of course, for everything else, go to you don't need jQuery GitHub repo to look for the equivalent codes in JavaScript. So these are some examples of some jQuery codes and the equivalent in JavaScript. So jQuery gradually lost its uniqueness over the years and this can be attributed to three things. Number one, jQuery, uh, sorry, JavaScript has become more mature as a language and using modern JavaScript libraries and frameworks have become the trend. New APIs have been released that enable developers to achieve the same result with vanilla JavaScript. And of course, Google Chrome and Firefox came and they implemented JavaScript consistently. So you could see the downward trend of jQuery represented in blue. So in recent years, there were a lot of discussion about jQuery. Whether is it going to die? Whether are we, you know, should we continue to use it, to teach it? So if developers are slowly moving away from jQuery, what are the alternatives? Well, there are some. For instance, we could use transformation tools like Babel, which would trans transpile the codes for older browsers. And if you need advanced selector support, try using micro libraries like Sizzle, which is also a selector library in jQuery. Or there's SelectorVids, which is another very small selector library that brings CSS selector support to all browsers. And of course, in, for everything else, you can use vanilla JavaScript. So this brings us back to the question, do you need jQuery in 2019? What do you guys think? Okay, <laughs> if you say no in your heart, well, there are cases to use jQuery. For example, you may work in a team where not all front-end developers are JavaScript wizards or they are more used to using jQuery. If the work includes libraries or plugins that are dependent on jQuery, like Bootstrap, for some reason, you may not have the luxury or access to the latest cool tech, if your app or your website needs to support uh, old browsers that have an older set of standards, or if you want to do something light and something quick. So, although the jQuery library is gradually losing ground, it is still very much relevant. And that's because, as you can see, it's used by more than 74% of all websites. But then again, most of them are on version 1 of the library. Here's a list of some famous sites that's using jQuery. 
So, in a nutshell, the pros of jQuery. Well, it has been around for some time, so it's pretty stable. A lot of developers know it. It's good for small projects where you do not want to link to a large code base. It's fast and easy to learn. In fact, many, dev uh, many boot camps are still teaching jQuery, including my school. And lastly, you can understand and use jQuery without knowing JavaScript. But that is not recommended, of course. And jQuery cons. Because many people blindly copy and paste code, there is a lot of spaghetti code around. And unfortunately, sometimes you may have to fix it. jQuery can easily be replaced with polyfills, like Babel polyfill, as it is much lighter and straightforward. And if you have experienced JavaScript developers on your team, there is no reason to use jQuery unless you are targeting old browsers. So, as mentioned earlier, one of the main reasons why jQuery is still relevant is because it still has to support a large number of websites. But the trend is declining. Furthermore, in 2019, jQuery is not a necessity because JavaScript browser support is more consistent than ever. I think Wes Boss from the Syntax podcast puts it very nicely. He said, jQuery is not bad, it's just that everything else is getting better and better. So, to jQuery or not to jQuery, that is the question. Maybe this quote will help. At the very least, make sure you know what jQuery is doing for you and what it's not. Here's a list of references if you would like to read more. I would highly recommend the GitHub one as it's very extensive. Okay, with that I end my talk. And uh, if you have any stories uh, about working with jQuery, I would love to hear them. Uh, please approach me later. Thank you. Mm -hmm.